Welcome to Metal Matters, a Guinea Radio podcast. I'm your host, Mike Hill, and I'll be leading you on this adventure. We'll be getting into deep discussions about classic records, profiles on up-and-coming bands, and interviews with your favorite artists. You can check out new episodes every week, so be sure to subscribe and never miss out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate the continued support. I see the, uh, the likes, I see the good reviews, the five-star ratings and all that stuff, and it means a lot to me. So if you dig the show, please share it and tell your friends about it. If you want to get real crazy, give us a star rating on iTunes or write a review. This episode is special to me, man. Eric Rutan has a monumental body of work. You know, if you got into his work with uh, Ripping Corpse, his years with Morbid Angel, and uh, all the Hate Eternal records, he keeps upping the game, but he keeps bringing it time after time. For those of you that listened to our year-end special, I picked Hate Eternals Upon Desolate Sands as my album of the year. We talked about that and some other interesting stuff, such as filling in for Cannibal Corpse on this upcoming year's tour schedule. Before we get started, if any of you guys want to hit me up, my main social media is Instagram and Facebook. I don't really mess around on Twitter. Uh, I don't even really get on, go on Facebook a whole lot, but... If you guys want to message me, uh, that's probably a good place to find me. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's the alleged Mike Hill, where I post about the show as well as a bunch of personal stuff. On Facebook, since there are thousands of people named Mike Hill, I'm known as Michael Hill. So please pay a little attention, make sure you get the right guy. On either platform, you can DM me if you want to hit me up and talk about the show, let me know what you like or dislike. If you want to throw out some ideas, I'll listen, but I can't guarantee you that they will end up as future episodes, but you never know. Also, if you're on Gimme Radio, you can check out my DJ show, The Sacred and Profane. It's a two-hour show, twice a month. I play everything from Bauhaus to Napalm Death to Discharge to Watain or whatever strikes my fancy. Well, I just got to let you know that my um, for Gimme Radio, my uh, you know top five records for 2018, Upon Desolate Sands, was number one, so... That's how I feel. Damn, about the you record. Got, man, you know what, Mike? I always knew you were the coolest man. But on, <laughs> on, on, on top on top of it, you got great taste yeah. in music. I, I mean, shit. I keep learning new things about you every every time we talk, man. It's no, amazing. man, it, you beat that. I mean, you know, not like it's a competition or anything, but um, I that when that record came out, you know, I'm like, all right, I know this is going to be good. But then, like when we li- we were listening to it on the way down to practice, and I was like man, this is, like, like really good. Like, a totally different dimension, I feel like, was added to this record. You know what I mean? Ah, thanks. Thanks, Mike, man. I, it was, it was a, it was like, um, uh, like, I guess a point of emphasis in a sense, but I, I don't put too much thought into the crafting of the records, really. It's usually I just kind of um, let the story unfold, I guess, and, and take the journey on where it leads me in, in more in an organic sense. But, I guess the one thing I always think about in in the last few records is just expanding the horizon, but at the same time keeping true to who we are as a death metal band, but really pushing the limitations of what we can achieve uh, in a musical sense, individual sense, and collective. And certainly when you have a different dynamic, like with Hannes, where you know JJ and I have been playing together over 10 years now, man, we got a certain musical chemistry that just keeps, I think expanding uh in in such a positive way uh i mean me and him just we just i don't know man we just do such a great job co-writing songs together i i truly enjoy it and with hannes you know hannes is such an amazing drummer he's like you know you you know he'd be like hey man i was thinking about this you know for this part and you know play a part and be like like this you know it's like yeah you know, like the average guy would take like 10 weeks to learn the part, but for Hannes, he's just like, oh, you mean like this? You know, he just whips it out because uh, he's such an amazing drummer and musician. Um, so uh, for me, there's good two years of work into crafting it and, you know, basing uh, the songs off of unique circumstances and, and different things. And uh, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about music is that, you know, for me, life's journey kind of ends up translating into, uh, 
my musical journey. So yeah, it's been that way for 30 plus years of my, my whole life and career at this point. So, you know, uh, upon death of the sands really covered a lot of, a lot of ground, I think. And, and man, it's one of my favorite productions that I've been oh, able to work It sounds great on. too. I mean, just yeah. you know, the, the sonic sonically, it's pretty you know, sonically. Yes. Yeah. It captured everything I could have hoped for with a pond of sand. So I, I got to say it's, it's definitely in, in one of my watermarks of my career, like a pond of sands, I really believe it will be up there in many different ways for me personally speaking. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that a lot of people really saw that as well and hear that. And then so it's, it's like the icing on the cake that people, would feel that way about the record. Well, this is also number seven full lengths for you guys, right? This is the seventh record. Uh, yeah. Number seven. And what I, what I find is like, you know, bands at this stage of their career run the risk of things starting to fall into that same rut of things kind of, you know, just pushing out records and it's like, okay, this is cool, but it sounds like the other two records, you know? And yeah. And that's why like when, when, like I said, when we, when I first hit play on this record, it was extreme and brutal, which is what I expected. But then there was some other stuff on the record, like the song uh, "From Whom We Have Lost." Yeah, which is like there's a. It's almost it, it. almost reminds me of like some of the stuff you did with Alas. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you, <laughs> I mean, the depth. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, you know, it's it's. I mean, that song specifically. Yeah. Was oh, man was just inspired you know by uh, some you know tremendous loss in, in my family and uh at, at multiple times during right. a few year period so it just had this um uh, you know man it was it was honestly when i when i started working on it i never had idea, any idea would take on the direction and end up being um I hate eternal song, but it just led to that in, in a very natural uh, way. And uh, even like the, I mean, the main melody in the song and the solo yeah. in the song, those are all like these, it was like a moment in time that I actually didn't even, uh, I was never able to recreate. I mean, it was like something that I kind of crafted at a, at a moment, you know, of, you know, um, of loss and, uh, you know, kind of grieving in a sense. And so I was able to kind of, I mean, I built the song around that, um, at another point in my life of the similar process. So it was really kind of chemistry of that song coming together. And one of the songs, man, oh, and I hear it even to this day, it's still, it definitely, has it moves me in a way that not a lot of songs I've written um, have in that similar fashion. So it is definitely something that I put a lot of court myself into, and I think it's pretty obvious when people hear it, you know. Uh, but that's what every chance I get to do a record, you know, with Hate Eternal or any band for that matter, is is that I just feel like, man, it's the more I do it, the more I want to pour everything I have into it, um, and and I think that's what allows like upon just the sands to really breathe in a sense is that it was kind of written over a period of time over a few years. And, and, you know, that journey was all over the joint. Yeah. <laughs> and you can, if you go back and hate eternals, uh, you know, collection here, man, and like every record is like a different you know, a chapter of my life and a chapter of the band. And it really reflects that. And, and as I listen to those records, um, like if I'm practicing for a tour and I go back to this record, that record, it just brings me back to a moment in time, man. And, and you know, man, it's it's intense to say the least, right? You know, and, yeah. and upon just the sands, damn, man, I, I tell you, I'm so pleased with with how that record came out and everything that went into it. Well, you mentioned the solo in that song, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. whom we have lost, and like. You know, I, I love riffs and, and, you know, I like solos too, but I, I really focus on like riffs and songs. But when that solo hits, it's like that, that to me, you, unique to most other stuff I listen to, that's kind of like the centerpiece of the song, man, I think, in my opinion. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's I, might, neat. I might be out of line when I say this too, but like, you know, we like extreme metal. We were into like, you know, death metal, you know, brutal stuff. But then we also like, 
like Michael Shanker and like Yuli Roth and stuff sure. like that. You know what I'm trying to say? And that mm -hmm. kind of like that influence kind of shines a little bit in this song. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like it, it comes out of like uh, like this old school like feel to it, you know? Oh, man. Well, and, you know, like I said, I mean, it was all feel. And that's a man. That's just a one. That's just a. And that whole middle solo is a one take performance, you know, it's really it's just like, yeah, it just came, uh, at this one moment in time. And then, you know, the amazing thing is, is that, um, I recorded it and man, I, it, and, and this has only happened to me. I can only think of two times, honestly, or three, two or three times in my whole career that this has happened where, I recorded the solo and you know, the other, the other solos I can remember my solo and Tombo on fury and flames. And then my solo on fire resurrection, which were both songs written for Jared, my old bandmate. Yeah. And those were solos that were done in a moment in time. And, um, I remember trying to re-record them and recreate that when I was at the solo point of the album after the rhythms and I could not capture that same emotion. So I ended up keeping those solos from when I was working on it during the process, because I just could not, it was impossible. Like, and the, you know, for whom we have lost that solo, it just had so much freaking, you know, depth of, 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 emotion in there and I, I couldn't there was just no way i would and maybe i could have made it a little of this like a little tighter or that bend a little better but the, the reality was there was no way i was going to encapsulate that same emotion and that's why i kept it as it was and because i just it just had a special something to it that it, i mean it just um it was it was just moving in a sense and there's no way i was i just knew like man I'm just going to keep this as it is because it just had such a special, special um, uh, sentiment behind it. And, and the time when I had recorded it and played it and written it and just went with it. Um, so it's not happened very often. It's just been these few moments that, 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 that has happened. I also, I hear some seven string on there too. I think there's what, like three songs. It's got seven string guitar. In it. Yeah. That that's one of them. Yep. Um, yeah. That, that, with the G sharp tuning, which is, you know, like I kept the same tuning, you know, um, that I use, which is C sharp standard, but I, I just added the extra depth with the seven string for three songs. And, and that certainly helped open up the whole musical journey and process because I, I gotta be honest with you. I was playing with the guitar for like a couple months because I was like, man, I really want to kind of expand in, in hate eternal and you know it's like man we're technical and fast and all that but it, it was never that was never um i don't put emphasis into like worrying about being tech or being fast or being slow or being anything i just worry i just let the things come naturally but i guess the one thing i thought like man if i add the different tuning what kind of inspiration will that create for me and like what journey will i take on on writing and it certainly opened up this whole other path of of like heaviness and depth that i knew that i could create and 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 felt like that this might help propel that but for a few months i was jamming on it and nothing came to me i was like you know what man i remember telling scooter you know at, at granville guitars you know at the studio i said man i'm not sure if i'm if I'm feeling this, man, I don't know if it's going to come. But then I went through a patch uh, just on, on a, on a, in, in life where I was just feeling that kind of darker doom and gloom. And, man, yeah. all of a sudden, one day I started jamming on the seventh string and riffs started coming out of me like, like man, just pouring. And so it just goes to show how one moment in time you can be like, eh, I ain't feeling that. And then, like, you know, months later, all of a sudden you're just – flowing and then that's exactly what happened and i gotta say that i'll man i'm sure for the next record i'll probably i'll probably you know create some more songs with that tuning which just means i gotta have a hell of a lot more guitars live that's the only downfall yeah, of it, but, uh, <laughs> yeah i remember I when when, it. when we were at we uh, a couple of years ago when we were down there um mm -hmm. we wrapped the day we wrapped guitars we were hanging out and you pulled out that seven string that you used in morbid 
Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, okay. Like maybe, yeah, uh, maybe the next Hate Eternal record will have some seven string guitar in it. And sure enough, it did. <laughs> sure enough, man. I mean, you know, the thing is, is luckily a friend of a friend hooked me up with Ibanez nice. and they sent me a new tremolo for that original universe. And, you know, that's that white universe was, you know, Trey's guitar. He used it for Covenant, wrote Covenant, and then he gave it to me. Uh, when he got a couple new universes towards domination, he gave me that guitar for my birthday and I wrote domination with it. And it's just been in my arsenal next to my Gibson Explorer, which you know very well. Oh, I, I actually, <laughs> I mean, all the rhythms on this record were tracked with the Explorer and the seventh string. And then I used my red iron bird for all the solos and overdubs and things. Um, and I mean, those guitars are, they're legend, man. They're, they're you know, just because not, because I played them, but just because they're fucking awesome guitars and they sound freaking amazing and they open up all different paths uh, of, of things. And it was really neat to kind of like to play these guitars that I hadn't played uh, on a record in, in a long time. And it kind of opened up some different avenues in a different way. It was really neat. Do you got any favorite tracks on the record? That, you, know? you know, man, I mean, man, it, it's, I'll tell you, it's, this is one of the hardest records to even pick out. Like, when we had to pick out what was the single, like, not the singles, but, you know, the songs we released and stuff. Right. Man, I was, I struggled. We we all struggled to try to come to the same um, answer. Uh, and, and partially it's because I just, man, I was so, so happy with how the, song, the album flows from beginning to end. Not too long, not too short. And, and it's like a journey from beginning to end. But, man, some of my favorite songs are, for different reasons are probably, you know, um, man, I love the, you know, I mean the title track and, and nothingness of being, and for whom we have lost just the down to songs are so unique in in completely different ways. But then like something like, you know, uh, all hope destroyed and, and violent fury, you know, musically speaking, have a completely kind of different compositional approach than, than I really had done in the past. Um, and so, very those those songs definitely have something you know to me that they're just really encapsulate a lot of of what hate eternal is and, and who i am as a player uh, you know and, and writer and uh but man I, as a whole i think in the whole album man i it's just so many really pleased with with all the songs and and, and the whole album as a whole be, doing Hate Eternal requires a lot of logistics because you know you got you got a guy coming in from Europe, you got a guy coming in from Jersey, and you're down in in Florida. Yeah. So, so like, what what is that like? You know, when it comes to practice and recording, and you guys, you guys, I'm I'm assuming you guys all work a lot on your own too. Oh man, well that's the luxury of when you you play with guys that are at the upper echelon of of what they do, and you know, I mean JJ. Well, we've been playing together for over ten years, and he has a Pro Tools rig, and I have Pro Tools, and we send files back and forth. And actually, for this record, we did a ton of Skyping um, to show each other these riffs. You can imagine what it's like to, like, teach, like, the first song on the Pondesla Sands over Skype, man. It's a challenge because uh, sure. it's so many goddamn notes. Uh, and vice versa, you know, JJ would be sending me stuff from some of the songs we worked on together. Um, and so... You know, it's a tremendous challenge, but me and him have been working together so long, man. So we have this certain chemistry that just we're able to pick up each other's ideas and riffs and, and flow naturally. Um, and then with Hannes, well, he has his own studio. He's used to recording records for other bands. So me and him, you know, I was sending guitars and clicks back and forth with some loose drum ideas, and then he'd send it back. What do you think of this? I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's awesome go with that and, and you know so we did that for months and months um and and then uh Hannes came over from europe and was here for like a month of us just doing practicing pre-pro every single day at the studio recording demos of all the songs we demoed the whole album nice before we even recorded the album itself so um and same with jj he came down and recorded and there's it's been that way for many haiti tunnel records now is you know, ever since I did Dream of the Dead, and you know, at nineteen, you know, the dream was to always have my own studio, yep. record my own records, and and hopefully get to record bands I like and some friends' bands. And it's certainly like 
you know, it expanded a million fold past what I ever like really thought would happen with my producing in studio, man. It's crazy that it took on this whole other life that I never knew would become so um, expanded like it has, but that's always been my dream. Um, and to be able to have a few months to just practice every day in the studio and write shit and, and uh, do it, do it to that whole next level. So, uh, and it's always rewarding, especially with a pond of the sands where I just feel like, man, it's, it's one of my, my favorite outputs that I've been able to do out of the studio. Um, and, and it's a tremendous feeling to say, man, okay, how do we improve on album number eight and, and look forward to, to crafting that in the future, you know? You um, you're a big fan of using a uh, superior drummer, uh, which which I just recently started using uh, Easy Drummer. So uh, sure, like when you put together the, the song ideas, how how like how close like uh, when you send these over to Hannes, like you know, does he take that as a template, or is he just like, no, nah, I'm just going to do it this way, or does he use any of those ideas? Have they found themselves into the final versions of any of the songs? Um, you know, I got to be honest with you, I love to work with the drummer, like. Uh, mono e you know, yeah. like per, like in a room and so i'll send the drum ideas like hey man i know this is gonna be like a blast or like a like a skank beat or a double bass section here but mm -hmm. when you know i i don't use superior drummer as like the end all be all and pre-pro it just kind of helps me construct the songs in a sense and so sometimes like Hannah, you know, or, or the other drummers that work would be like, man, that's a great idea. Let's fucking keep it. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Uh, I guess when I first started, I mean, I've been using a drum machine since for pre-production since the beginning it was my four track, even, you know, like in the early nineties. So it's just something that helped me help craft songs together. Cause you can listen back to it with the drums and it yeah. flows and work on lyrics and all kinds of shit. Um, so, but I'm always, to me, collaboration is, is key in success in musical ways. And so I always want to work, like with Hannes, I'd always send it to him and say, hey, listen, this isn't um, the end all be all, man. If you got some better ideas, send it to him. And he would. And sometimes I'd be like, ah, I'm not sure about that. And sometimes he'd be like, dude, that's brilliant. Let's go with it. Uh, but ultimately, when we got in that room, for for weeks and weeks every day breaking down every riff every drum beat for every song that's when we really got into the nitty-gritty but certainly um doing that helped Hannes get a feel of what i was going for ahead of time um but you know it, it definitely helps lay a blueprint i guess for the album in a sense but i don't tend to um when i'm working with so many great drummers man i want to get their input as well but a lot of times as a guitar player you kind of maybe have a feel of what you're thinking behind it and the drum approach doesn't fit but i'm always open for suggestion and i i really enjoy in every facet of, of recording whether as a musician or a producer is for people to lay it all on the table man and sometimes that shit gets swiped off and put in the trash and then sometimes man that shit gets uh framed for life because now it's on that record on the wall of the hall so you know it just depends on on what it is but i'm always open for suggestion and people the more i learned through music is the realization of like man the more um if people got if you're playing with talented people that have a vision man you know there's never a harm in letting people um explore new ground and territory and and but ultimately I usually kind of have a vision of, of what I'm looking for in a lot of ways. And then sometimes I have, I have no idea. So, you know, gotta be open to suggestion in music, man. That's the key collaborations. Oh yeah, man. I mean, I, I just started using that for the last batch of songs we wrote and it's like changed my whole like approach. You know what I'm starting to say? It's oh, like, great. Man. Yeah. I mean, I, I started getting crazy though, like editing, like getting into the, um, you know, the MIDI, like you can expand the MIDI. Oh, right. And start moving stuff around in there. It's like, but then I realized, well, well actually, my drummer is going to probably rewrite most of this stuff, so I'm not going to get too too crazy about changing stuff around. But I think that's the key, really, is like not getting too involved in it. You know, like like I mean, to me, I don't go because you can, and I have when I first started <laughs> working with it, I was like going crazy with the accents and, yep. and rolls and everything. 
exact. And then I was like, you know what? I, I'm wasting so much time on this shit. And, you know, I'm going to end up playing with the drummer. And we might end up changing the whole thing. So why waste the time? Um, you know, but sometimes you know, they end up being good ideas. And, and you know, sometimes, sometimes they don't. So how is it working with Morbid after all these years in the studio? I mean, working with Morbid, it, it was it was just a new, I mean, it was like a different dynamic, of course, because, I mean, I've, man, I've toured with Morbid Angel yeah. a million times. I've played on three records, yep. toured for four, and, and known these guys forever. So, but it was definitely, a, of course, a different dynamic working with Morbid Angel in there because now I'm recording, not playing. And, um, but it was a really intense experience, of course, uh, and an involved experience. Um, but something that ultimately just made kind of brought things full circle in some way in my, in, in how I looked at things like, wow, this is crazy, man. You know, like 30 years ago, uh, I mean, Ripping course was opening for Morbid Angel, right? You know, around the Alters of Madness just coming out, and and then I end up playing in the band, and now here I am recording it. It's it was it was kind of like a a three hundred and sixty full circle of like you know, holy shit! Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, it's a really uh, intense uh, intense thing, and and something that man, I mean, um, to be able to work with Morbid Angel and every every step of the way has been, you know, a tremendous part of my whole life and career, man. And I got to say that, you know, man, so much. when I think about like Morbid Angel and Cannibal Corpse and, and, you know, and, and Ripping Corpse and Hate Eternal, I mean, of like those bands have been such a huge part of my life in, in various ways. And, um, man, I, I just learned so much from, from every one of these experiences, you know, it's just, and, and to be able to add that in, like working with Morbid Angel at this juncture after producing, you know, I don't know how many records now. I'm probably getting close to the 100 mark soon oh, enough records, yeah. I think. Um, so, you know, it definitely was really unique. It was a completely different uh, experience to, to record Morbid Angel in that sense and not be on the other end of it. So, uh, but, it, but it was, man, it was a, it was a very very um rewarding experience in many ways yeah because i remember when when i found out about that record and that you you were working on it, you're gonna be producing it i'd started i i just thought about it for a minute and i was like man what a trip to be eric rutan right now man it's like <laughs> you know I'm trying to say it's like you're you go from ripping corpse you know opening for more like you're saying then yeah. being joining the band Making all those records, doing all those tours, like doing some of the bigger tours with Morbid Angel, like when you guys play with Pantera and all that stuff too. Oh yeah, you know, and and now you're you're the guy who's crafting their next, the sound of their next album. And I was like, what a trip, man. I mean, it, it, it's you know, I guess to me, my goal was just to try to bring out the vision of what Trey kind of envisioned. You know, that that's I guess that's always my goal as you know when I'm working on records is try to hopefully hopefully um portray the vision of, of the people involved in, in creating it you know that's always how i look at things and you know what sometimes your interpretation is different than than they may look at it as and they may want something different than you thought but you know the whole point is making that connection with everyone involved to create the best you can and i mean these these circles of things kind of like you know um my immediate future at the moment man there's these circles of of life man that just somehow have happened in the you know like with that and then with my with me now of like wow you know these things kind of come into your life and you know man i mean anyone that knows me knows i'm, I'm always up for the challenge man and you know i've Shit, my whole life's been challenging, so I, 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 I don't know what I would. Uh, nothing I do is very simple, uh, and nothing in my life's been very simple. So it kind of, just kind of how it all pans out. And uh, I, me personally, I guess I just, I always deliver my best when I'm faced with adversity and challenge. And um, 
man, I tell you, it, it keeps coming. Uh, so I'm ready for it, you know. Well, speaking of which, there was an announcement a couple of weeks ago, I think, that you're going to be playing um, fill-in guitar from Cannibal Corpse on their upcoming uh, touring that they have this year. And Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, what are the – musically, you know, preparing – you know, playing in, in, in Hate Eternal, which is like music that you've written that's incredibly complicated and technical, and then playing in another band who has equally technical music, yet it's <laughs> someone else. Like, what's the preparation like for that? Oh, man. I'll tell you. I, I, it's basically, with the exception of the five or six days that I went home at the holidays, um, you know, I basically started a couple days before. I mean... To put it in perspective, you know, I got home from the Cannibal Course Eight Eternal Tour, yeah. uh, eighth or something, and then um, two weeks later, uh, all of a sudden, I got to prepare to play a headlining set with Cannibal Course. Um, and and you know, of course, you know, first and foremost, like man, it was, you know, my honor, man, to to be able to, I mean, you know, man, the guys at Cannibal Corpse pat and everyone involved it, it, like for me to be able to do this um man it's a tremendous honor and and you know those guys are great friends of mine and and so much a big part of, of my life so for me to do this i just knew that um man this was i i just knew this is i needed this is what i need to do and this is what i'm going to do and i'm going to make sure i do it to the best of my ability and i knew i could help in so many different ways um this whole situation so uh i've just been man i started right away man i mean i bought i got the tab book i got tab and i started working on my own um and then last couple of weeks after the holidays i started working with with the guys and rob of course and the rest of the guys and then band practice but um it's been a challenge man i mean to learn uh, like you said, I mean, you know, Alex and Pat and Rob and and Paul and, and man, even Jack Owen, like some of the older material. I mean, there's a lot of different styles in Cannibal Corpse. Um, that's completely different than than how I play with Hate Eternal. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. More of an angel ripping corpse. So man, it is is it's been a very challenging uh, thing for my brain, and uh, you know, now having which is is kind of as of recently just um learned you know the last song for the set which i was like holy shit i can't believe i've been able to like absolve you know uh 15 songs in in in, in this amount of time but i guess man i just all i did was all i've done for the last month is really sit here and just play guitar and read tab and work with the guys and just I mean, i've been playing so much damn guitar um just to make sure that man, I'm, I'm going to be on my A game for this shit. And, you know, and then that's important because, you know, cannibal corpses, man, they're, they're the best man. And, and Pat is one of the best guitar players I've ever known man, or ever worked with. And, and those guys being great friends of mine, it just, um, man, I've just, all I've done is put my head down and just been working, but I got to tell you, still got, three weeks and i man, i'm feeling great on the song good I've been really working my ass off on on um you know music when you have to learn all this stuff really the goal and man i set up a schedule and and i just wrote it on the studio on a wet dry eraser board these are the songs i need to learn these days I need to have this so i make sure i have all the songs by this date and then have a um I got a little bit ahead of schedule even, which is awesome. And then, you know, to have three full weeks of band practice going into the tour. I mean, man, I mean, to have the whole set and three solid weeks of practice is, is, um, it's, it's a, the journey to this point as of literally today, uh, you know, has been, um, challenging to say the least is just memorization. And a lot of that just comes from, repetition just playing over and over again but certainly what helped me a lot is that you know half the set are songs that i produced with them so you know i know a lot of those songs in my head and all the other songs well i know because i own their albums from when they came out i've you know i've been listening to cowboy corpse since 
their first album. Um, I've known some of the guys since their first album. And so that certainly helped me in many ways, you know, um, knowing the songs kind of in my head already. Uh, but learning this stuff, whoo, man, yeah. it's been a challenge. And, uh, but I've, I've, I've really, um, it's been a great challenge, man. I've enjoyed the challenge and um, feeling really good about uh, the progress and just being where I'm at playing all these songs now. It's just, it's uh it's definitely like a um two things of like wow and then like whew, a little bit of a not too much of a sigh because I still got a lot of work to do but uh but just to have the stuff in in memory now is like man yeah it's a it's a great feeling yeah I mean and also those their sets are pretty long too man so it's I mean you know going to see Countable Corpse as, Corpse as a headliner. You know, it's not like you 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 got like a thirty minute set like opening or something. No, like man, that. it's it's like a, a substantial amount of time you're out there playing it with is. that complexity. You know what I'm trying to say? Fifteen, twenty songs, man. Yeah, you man, know, it's geez. like yeah, that's that's a lot of material from from fourteen albums and an EP. Uh, you know, there's just who man, yeah, it, there's a lot in different eras of the band and the different musical approaches. Yeah. And I mean, these guys are. You know, I always say this all the time. It's like, you know, working with those guys, you know, like from a guitar standpoint, like Rob and Pat and Alex, I mean, those guys write some incredible, incredible music. And so for me to be able to kind of have to adapt to their approach and their style, man, it totally was, of course, you know, messing with my brain. Like, wow, I can't believe he wrote this like this. Like, my <laughs> my my freaking hands would never do this. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, the phrasing on some of this stuff is so over the top, man. And so it, it's been such a unique challenge the, the last month in so many different ways, not just musically, but just on a personal level, um, you know, wanting to uh man just give everything i have and 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 be here in the best um uh, best way i can to make um this the best it can be and, and so it, it it's definitely been a uh a whirlwind but um man i'm knowing all these songs now it's just it's wild yeah it's, it's really wild i never i never envisioned um that i would this would ever happen so you know of course playing these songs it, it's been wild it's, it's my brain man if you could like plug a usb <laughs> stick into my brain and just like started to like move the the files the, holy <laughs> crap man i mean i'm gonna have to start moving something out of there because i think it's overflowing at the moment but, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's been it's been a great challenge for me and uh certainly one that man it, i it's just it's been all about doing the right thing and feeling good about what i'm doing here and um and i'm looking forward to uh getting out there and playing these songs now does uh how does that affect things at the studio i mean you got to i'm sure you had to rearrange a lot of stuff and you know i did uh unfortunately i you know there were some casualties too in the studio which was tough uh because you know, you, you know, you, you know this well as anybody. You start talking with bands, you know, six months out, um, you know, four months out, and you're talking about time frames and stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, what I thought I had available is no longer available. So I had a few. I, unfortunately, you know, I lost a couple records, um, and you know, of course they understood and they have deadlines themselves and sure. hey we can't we can't record in august you know we need to record in april well damn i'm leaving for the slayer tour right so uh you know of course they understood but that's part of the the casualties and you know i had some internal tours we were planning on and those no longer are happening but you know it, it just that's just the way it is man you know especially in this case where, man, it was not even a, there's, you know, when I, when I knew they needed my help, it wasn't even a matter of a decision to be made. It was just like, what do you need? Let's do it. And that's that. And, you know, it, it's, you know, 
uh, you know, it's, I guess the easiest decision for a very hard situation. So, you know, but I knew that this is what I was meant to do and, um, do it to my best. Now with the studio, like, you know, obviously Manor Recordings is a place that people go to for extreme music, metal, mm-hmm. death metal. Have you, um, have you worked with any other sort of non-metal bands in the studio? Well, the Mountain Goats, you know, of course being, um, you know, I mean, uh, a completely, you know, non-metal entity, uh, which was such an awesome experience, which I fortunately got to uh, do some guest guitar work when they came in town in Tampa a couple months nice. ago, which oh, was wow. super, cool. super fun. Um, was out of the blue. But, you know, John is a huge, huge, you know, death metal fan, and uh, that's how I ended up working with him, uh, is he saw some video footage of me producing cannibal corpse and he it just gave him this idea man i want to work with this guy and so you know i was fortunate enough to record four songs with him and um you know make great relationships with him and also of course you know been able to work with you know mad ball and agnostic front you know and um i guess different you know not only just you know, hardcore and punk and death metal, but all kinds of different metal, you know, uh, working with tombs and working with black bass and working with goat whore and totally green and the variety of stuff I've been able to, to work on. Oh man. It, it, it's so great to be able to diversify in that sense. Uh, I mean, I listen to all kinds of music. I grew up with so much different music in my life. And so for me working on different music, it just challenges you in a, in a way that, um, you know, repetition of doing something the same all the time doesn't. And so I've been challenged in so many ways, man, with all these different music I've been able to work with. And I always am open to the future of challenges of working with different music. So anytime I do get a chance, I do. Um, something I'm working on on the site is a project with my friend Yark. Um, and it's like he plays uh, Turkish instruments, and so, like, he's helping craft these songs with me, and I'm playing, like, uh, you know, electric guitar and classical acoustic guitar, some Ebo and stuff. Wow. It's a really unique thing. Um, and has it'll have some, like, vocal passages from uh, Maggie, who sang on a Pondessa's Sands on the one part. Oh, um, cool. right on. And so they play in a band called Saratan, and we became friends, and um, just we had this idea, man, we should do this musical collaboration. It would be really unique, you know? And, and for me, if I'm going to do something musically speaking, you know, why would I like start another death metal band? Well, Hate Eternal, I can do wherever I want yeah. with Hate Eternal. He's an open a, slate, you know? Way. Yeah. So doing something like this is just completely out there. I mean, it's like so different. I mean, hearing this stuff that we're working on, and I'm not sure what I'll get to at this rate um, with my workflow just getting kind of doubled. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure when that will come out, but it will. And uh, man, it's something that I'm really enjoying. And it certainly, once again, anytime I get to work with different music, it just helps helps me uh, become better at, at everything I do. How's uh, how's things uh, working out with Scooter on site now? I see that he's got a you know an Instagram page, and I've been checking out his progress with guitars and everything too. Oh man, Scooter! I don't, you know. I've been so fortunate, like having screwed the studio has been there, what, four years now, I think. And uh, man, that was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. Yeah, was, totally. uh, you know, once Brian left, he worked with me for like 10 years and man, I couldn't, f- for like two years, I didn't find anybody um, to, to, to work in the B room. And ultimately, Scooter had this small shop and I, I just had a feeling that, man, if I said, hey, well, you want to move in the the B room in the studio, you'll have more space. We'll be right next door. Uh, it could be a really unique thing um, to have a studio with like a guitar luthier literally in the place. I mean, you know, it's like the fix amps, fix. I mean, I mean, I, I was just telling him the other day, I said, I can't even imagine what the hell, how the hell did I even operate for a scooter? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, totally. I mean, he does so much work for me and all my clients and everything. And I like, what the hell? How did I even get by before? I have no freaking clue. Um, and and then fortunately, I I met you know Art Pais, you know, yeah, who's been working me for three years, yeah. and uh, you know he helps a ton as well. And, and I, you know I've got a good 
I think keys of life, man, this is, I learned this the hard way is, you know, if you surround yourself with negativity and negative people in your life, well, guess what, man, it's going to suck you down into the void. And if you surround yourself with positive people that are hardworking and dedicated and focused and, and, um, you know, then it pays you back tenfold. And man, I've been fortunate in mono recording that man, Sean O'Tani and Brian Elliott and Lord Pais and Scooter have all been a part of that journey. And, and, and even uh, Kino on door, who was, my partner for many years, you know, these people all made a huge impact over the 20 years of, I mean, this year is 20 years of the studio. Damn, 20 and years. Wow. 20 years, man. And 20 years of Conquering the Throne, our first album. is It's a weird thing. Yeah, there's a lot of 20-year shit going on this year for me. I was like, man, this is, somebody brought that up today about the, about each. Like, man, so you've had the studio for 20 years. I was like, holy shit, you're right, man. 99. Wow, man time 99 was a crucial moment you know, at least conquering the throne and um and then opening the studio and its humble beginnings and and man i mean 20 years 20 years of doing anything is is to me i you have to kind of take a little notice of it and just say wow this is pretty awesome man <laughs> you know one of the one of the things i i really love about you man is like like you know when you're making a record, things get intense, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes you're not, yeah. you know, me personally, I get in these like, you know, dark moods or whatever, but it's like, I always <laughs> felt like, like one of the coolest things about knowing you as a person and also working with you in this capacity is, is like, you always have this, um, like for lack of a better term, like a gratitude for having the things, being able to accomplish all that you've accomplished. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I always like really was inspired by that. I was always like, man, like Rutan is like a guy who knows how bad things can get and has seen the other side of things and is like very grateful for the good things that's around him now. You know, and that's, that's, I guess that's how I feel in life in general. It's, it's not just in my music career, but just in my life from having very, man, the, the, the lowest of the low, hits and and depth of darkness to to being able to come out of it and pull yourself out to get to where i'm at today in my life and my career it, it helps balance things out and you know when you endure challenges in, in, in your life and your family or things um during your childhood it's just either it breaks you or it makes you and you know in my case it made me who i am today to the point where Man, I mean, I I always feel like, man, I like when things pop up, I just always am ready to handle them. So, you know, it and knowing the other side of that coin, you know, the, the darker sort side of that coin, um, it always makes the, the, you know, the better side, I guess, you know, uh, that much more enjoyable. And when, when I think about how many pitfalls there's been in my career or in my life and then here i am in you know 2019 and um celebrating one of my one of my favorite records i've worked on and um you know doing something that's completely never saw coming of course filling in for pat and playing with cannibal corpse and touring with more angel and, and then slayer it's just like these moments you can't help but just appreciate them for what they are and it definitely helps you uh the darker moments in life just prepare you for the the, the brighter ones and certainly um for me it's just helped balance me out part of that is just you know man like i said you surround yourself with the right environment and the right people it just could go such a, a far way in your life and um the studio is one of the most stressful things you can do. But at the same time, I just love the hell out of it. I love being in there and creating a record with guys, whether my own or someone else's and just taking that on the chin in the sense of when I'm producing the records with the band, man, I know this record's their whole life. And so for me, I just hyper-focus on it. I don't think about anything else, but that record at that moment in time and just give everything I have. Cause at the end of the day, um, I learned a long time ago as much, you know, if you give everything you have into what everything you do, 
then you don't have regrets. And, you know, I've made a lot of big decisions in my career. Some that people thought I was absolutely nuts. What the hell are you doing? But man, when I look back on those big decisions I've made in my career, in my life, man, they were all the right ones. And that's because it came from, um, you know, it came from the gut, man, those right decisions. And I try to approach producing in that same way is just make the right decisions. If it feels right, it is right. You know? And, and so, uh, luckily I'm pretty in touch with my, with my own self and my, and the intuition that I have for things. And, and I, that balance kind of, I think gets portrayed hopefully in the, in the records that I work with, with other bands, you know? No, it's awesome, man. Yeah. That, that's a real inspirational thing to, you know, to put out there with people, you know, cause it's like a tough world, man. And like, you know, people, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just, it's like almost like this world is like designed to crush you, you know what I mean? And it's, I agree, man. Yeah. So to have that sort of mentality is important, you know? It's, I mean, it's just everything about music is difficult, you know? I mean, having a band, having a relationship with different people in a band and then having a relationship with your record label and the booking agent and uh, a manager or, you know, or different people, the fans, the, the you know, there's, there's so much involved to it. So, you know, I, I think to be able to be... I mean, I always say this to myself. It's like, man, a lot of people, a lot of people comment, man, you're so positive or seem grounded. And I think to myself, well, um, you know, the positive took decades of, of enduring a lot of things and, and really <laughs> yeah. um, just, you know, um, what's the word? You know, taking inventory of myself and, and realizing my shortcomings and what I needed to do in order to, um, get through this and in my life. And, um, you know, you just take it as it comes and, you know, people will comment sometimes, man, you seem like such a down to earth, humble guy. And I was like, well, man, how the hell, how could I not be, you know, it, it, you know, I never understood, um, it's funny that people to imagine that anybody would think I was like an arrogant person or something because man, I'm, I'm not, I'm a very humble person. And that's because I've had a taste of humility in many ways, man. Sure. And, and, and sometimes that taste of humility is what you really need in life. And, you know, whether that's when the shit hits the fan or whether that's just getting your ass beat, which, you know, I've had all of it, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, sometimes that humility will bring you a far way, man. And, and for me, I've had humility in every way possible. So that humility, either you learn from it or you become some, you know, bitter kind of person. Well, I'm not a bitter person. I learned from my humble moments in my life and, and, and capitalized on that in the sense of, well, I'm never going to let that happen again or I'm never going to do that again. Uh, I, I ain't the brightest star in the sky, but, man, I ain't, I'm not dull either. And so I've definitely learned from my mistakes and learned from things that happened and – um not a guy to really I like to think I don't tend to repeat the major, you know, mistakes I make. I, I learn from those mistakes and, and move forward and don't look back. Um, and that's, that's something that's taken me decades to, to work through is, is, um, you know, sometimes you, you kind of creep your eye in the past and, and, you know, there was a point where my whole life was surrounded in the past. I just lived in the past and, and it, it, uh, it completely dissolved me in murk and mire because of it. And I just had to climb my way out of that in order to survive really. And, and so for me, once you climb out of that thing and sometimes, man, you know, that leg keeps going down in the quicksand, but man, sure enough, I'll work my way to get that damn thing out. And, and that's how I approach everything whether it's a record um or personal and uh one thing that working in the studio has made me is is actually patient i mean oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a, man. you gotta I'm, be patient in the studio for sure yeah you have to i mean you know i know you you know any musician has worked with engineers that weren't patient including myself and uh man there's nothing worse than like working with somebody that's impatient or or just you could tell just doesn't give a crap. They just want to check out and go home. So I pride myself on never being that guy. And, um, but I'm by nature. I'm not a very patient person, actually. So the, the studio 
doing records and seeing people at their best and seeing people at their worst and, 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 you know, kind of balancing that out. And sometimes you got to bring people back to life and man, to get out of that rut. And, uh, it just, it's made me such a patient person. And then that's one of the good, I guess, many good things that have come out of working on records with, with bands and musicians that are all passionate about what they do is that it's helped, um, enable me to become a more, uh, you know, um, patient and compassionate person in that retrospect is guy. I know hard, how hard these records are, man, from every angle. So, um, man, the one thing I learned is in the studio, sometimes, you know, the shit hits the fan and oh, yeah, things man. get, they get ugly. They get real nasty. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, the, if those walls in my control room could talk, fuck me, man, I'll tell you, it's, it's just, it'd be talking some, serious stuff uh but fortunately they don't neither do i but um you know the the thing is is that you know those are all the things that happen in the studio it just makes you become uh you know who you are and like i said man i I learned from i learned from all this stuff man i'm like a damn sponge and the minute you think you know everything is the minute you you're a fool you ain't learning shit so uh you're going backwards so uh, i like to think i'm always moving forward man i try my best to do so well, Eric, thanks a lot, man, for being so generous with your time. Um, My pleasure, man. You know, Great talking with you. Today was like a big press day for you, and I'm glad you were able to just you know fit me in. You know, I appreciate that. Man, I always fit you in, man. <laughs> I always fit you in, man. You, I, I, I ain't fitting in shit, man. You're always welcome in any retrospect, in any way, my friend. <laughs> thanks a lot, bro. <laughs> you know it, man. You've been listening to Metal Matters, a Gimme Radio podcast. We'll be back next week, so be sure to subscribe and never miss out. Also, be sure to check out Gimme Radio via web, iOS, or Android for one of the best metal communities in the world, exclusive interviews and merch, and so much more.